So in this lecture, we are going to discuss the effects of increasing decreasing level of potassium, calcium and temperature on the heart function. How the increase or decrease in potassium, calcium and temperature will affect the heart function. So first of all, we will discuss the potassium. If the potassium uh, value in the blood is increased, it will uh, lead to the dilated heart, flaccid heart, slow rate and the resting membrane potential will be less negative. And similarly, if the potassium level in the blood is decreased, the heart rate will be fast, the resting membrane potential will be more negative and the contractility will be increased. So how that happens, how the effect of potassium, how the increase in potassium, how the decrease in potassium level lead to dilated flaccid heart and how decrease in potassium level uh, lead to the fast rate and more ne uh, more negative resting membrane potential. So basically, if you remember, we discussed in the uh, last a uh, few lectures the resting membrane potential and the uh, uh, depolarization the process of depolarization repolarization uh, and action potential of the heart basically in the heart muscle in the heart muscles uh, inside the heart muscle similarly uh, uh, is just like other cells there is a high level of potassium inside and uh, less uh, less level of potassium outside the cell similarly the intracellular or in, uh, inside the cell, the level of sodium is low while outside the cell, extracellular sodium level is high. Due to the movement of sodium, potassium and calcium uh, with the help of leak channel, fast sodium channel, slow sodium channel, uh, slow calcium channel and sodium potassium pump, there is a rapid shift in the resting membrane potential, which normally is minus 85 for the heart cells. We discussed uh, previously that as soon as there is uh, some leak of sodium into the uh, inside the cell from the outside because the sodium level in the cell of a heart tissue, basically the heart muscle is made of small cells, myofibrils. Inside the cells there is a lot of potassium and less sodium. So there are some leak channels, sodium uh, starts leaking inside the cell and which leads to decrease in the resting membrane potential. This resting membrane potential of the heart cell just like other cells which we have discussed in detail in, in the lectures on action potential and membrane potential, this, this resting membrane potential starts decreasing like minus 84, minus 83, minus 80. So, this starts uh, decreasing. When it starts uh, decreasing, a process known as depolarization starts, which on the graph we discussed like this. This depolarization starts. The resting membrane potential has started decreasing. At a certain level, fast sodium channels open, a lot of sodium in and depolarization occurs. As soon as depolarization occurs, after the fast sodium channels, the slow calcium channel starts opening and small amount of uh, calcium the calcium uh, channels open and calcium slowly starts coming into the cell this leads to the plateau the the sustained depolarization the sustained depolarization this is basically the membrane potential for example it's minus 85 over here and it's minus 65 somewhere for example so as soon as sodium starts entering, it starts decreasing. When the fast sodium channels open, a lot of sodium comes in, depolarization occur. This depolarization is sustained because of slow entry of calcium and it leads to the plateau. Sustained depolarization. Then the potassium channel, uh, channels open and potassium come out and coming out of the potassium leads to repolarization. The membrane potential comes down. So this process was discussed in detail previously and it was just a reminder that entry of sodium leads to depolarization process, entry of slow calcium leads to plateau and then exit of potassium from the cell outside leads to repolarization process. And this depolarization plateau and repolarization basically this process is responsible for the contraction of the heart. Now, if the level of potassium outside the cardiac cell is increased, if increase in the potassium outside the cell occurs, this resting membrane potential, this resting membrane potential, it will become less negative. It will become, it will become less negative. 
instead of minus 85 it will automatically become minus 75 or minus uh, 65 for example in case we need this depolarization for depolarization to occur we need the membrane potential to reach at minus 65 now we have a lot of sodium uh, potassium outside the cell and the resting membrane potential is automatically without any depolarization the resting membrane potential is less negative the resting membrane potential is less negative so the heart does not need to do any effort the heart is not doing any effort because there is nothing to do the membrane potential is already less negative this leads to flaccid heart slow rate slow contraction rate of the heart and dilated heart so increasing the potassium outside the cell will lead to dilated heart flaccid heart with slow heart rate due to the less negative resting membrane potential for example the pass percentage in your exam is decreased to 10 percent then you do not need to study a lot you will just need a little study to crack the exam but if your pass percentage in your exam is increased to 70 percent then you will need a lot of study to do to crack the exam you will have to do a lot of efforts same is the example with the heart if the level of potassium is increased the resting membrane potential is less negative it's minus 65 for example it is less negative as compared to minus 85 so the heart does not need to do any efforts it remains flaccid it remains low and it's remain it remains dilated but if the potassium level is decreased if the potassium level is decreased then this resting membrane potential from minus 85 it may come to minus 95 so it has the resting membrane is more negative it has become more negative this will lead to fast heart rate and increased contractility opposite to that of the high level of potassium so this is basically the effect of high and low potassium level and it's because of the effect of potassium level on the resting membrane potential now the effect of uh, calcium the effect of increased calcium on the heart is opposite to the effect of increased potassium level increased potassium level in the blood leads to dilated flaccid slow heart but increased calcium level in the blood leads to spastic contraction spastic contraction of the heart because we discussed that for the contraction of the heart muscles to occur we need a lot of calcium contraction of the ventricles contraction of the atria the contraction of the heart muscle is dependent on the calcium so if the calcium is high the contraction will be high and more calcium may even lead to spastic contraction of the heart similarly if the calcium calcium level in the blood is decreased calcium level is decreased then because cal blood heart muscles need calcium for its contraction and in case there is no calcium then the heart will become flaccid it will not be contracting uh, smartly or uh, it will not contract enough to pump blood so the effect of increased calcium in the blood is opposite to the effect of increased level of potassium increased level of potassium will lead to dilated flaccid slow heart because the resting membrane potential has become less negative but the increased level of calcium will lead to spastic contraction similarly slow less level of blood or hypokalemia hyperkalemia this is the increased value of blood uh, calcium potassium in the blood and hypokalemia hypokalemia is the uh, decreased level of potassium in the blood so hyperkalemia the effect is that of increased potassium hypokalemia the effects are that of decreased uh, potassium in the blood similarly hypercalcemia increased level of uh, calcium in the blood will lead to spastic contraction hypocalcemia the effects of decreased calcium will lead to flaccid contraction flaccidity of the heart then the effects of temperature on the human heart if the temperature of the, uh, the human body is increased for some time it will lead to increased heart rate and increased contractile strength 
for a limited duration for a specific duration between 60 to 70 degree Fahrenheit 60 to 70 degree Fahrenheit this will lead to increased heart rate and increased contraction of the heart because increasing temperature leads to increased permeability of the ions the permeability of sodium potassium calcium across the membrane is increased with the increasing temperature of the human body it's it leads to increased heart rate because the heart rate is dependent upon the level of and the permeability of sodium potassium calcium so if the permeability is high due to high temperature it will definitely lead to increased heart rate and increased contractile strength but it will be within the bracket of 60 to 70 degree fahrenheit if the temperature is very much high if it is very much high sorry sorry this is not uh, this is basically in the hypothermia this is this is somewhere in the <laughs> i confused it basically the normal resting temperature is somewhere around 97 degree uh, fahrenheit so a slight increase a slight increase in the uh, temperature a slight increase in temperature will increase the heart rate and contractility of the heart but if the temperature of the body is decreased if it is decreased between 60 to 70 degree fahrenheit the heart contractility will decrease so the permeability of the potassium sodium calcium will decrease and with a temperature as low as 60 to 70 degree fahrenheit the the contraction of the heart will decrease and a person may experience death even so increasing temperature leads to increased heart rate uh, within uh, specific limits and it also leads to increased contraction of the contractile strength of the heart but decreasing temperature leads to decreased heart rate decreased strength of uh, contraction of the heart and if temperature is decreased so much that it may uh, come to 60 to 70 Fahrenheit a person may even die due to arrhythmias uh, that are caused by the low temperature so this is a simple small lecture about the effects of sodium, potassium calcium and temperature on the heart rate to summarize it increased potassium leads to less resting membrane potential the minus 85 resting membrane potential of the heart is decreased to around minus 75 or minus 65 or minus 6, uh, 55 whatever and this less resting membrane potential leads to dilated heart flaccid hearts low heart rate and because the, the there is no excitation because there is uh, the uh, the heart is not doing any effort the 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 effort which the heart was doing to bring the resting membrane potential from minus 85 to minus 65 has already been achieved because of the high level of potassium so the heart become dilated flaccid and slow if the potassium level is decreased then this resting membrane potential will uh, decrease more like minus 95 or more so the heart will become fast the resting membrane potential will become more negative and the contractility will increase but these these effects will be within specific limits when the limits are crossed these uh, effects may diminish or some arrhythmias may occur then Similarly, the increased level of calcium in, on the heart will lead to spastic contraction of the heart because the contraction of the heart is dependent on the calcium level. Decreased level of calcium, also known as hypocalcemia, will lead to flaccidity of the heart. Then the temperature of the heart, uh, the body, will increase the heart rate for within specific limit and it will increase the contractile strength of the heart because increased temperature lead to increased permeability of sodium, calcium, potassium ions and the heart strength contractile uh, strength of the heart and the heart rate is dependent on these ions so um, if the permeability is high then the heart rate will and contractile strength of the heart will be high but if the temperature of the body is decreased then the permeability of the ions will decrease the heart rate will decrease uh, the heart um, contractile strength will decrease and even death can occur so that's all about the effects of potassium, calcium and temperature on the heart function. Thanks a lot for watching the video.